This is your tech news briefing for Wednesday, March 8th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. You are probably familiar with the concept of facial recognition. You may have just used it to unlock your phone. The use of facial recognition is growing. Concert venues, sports arenas, even airlines are beginning to let people use their faces as their tickets. And while that may seem convenient, some lawmakers are looking to tighten regulations around this kind of tech, citing privacy concerns and allegations of bias. With me to discuss the increasing use of facial recognition tech and how to keep your data safe is our personal tech columnist, Nicole Nguyen. Hey, Nicole. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Zoe. Nicole, I'm sure a lot of listeners have a general idea of what facial recognition tech is, but can you give us a brief overview of how it works? Facial recognition tech, as it is today, is basically face matching software. Some software takes an image of you, maybe via camera in real life, or they look at a government-issued ID. And then when you approach that technology via an entry point like a boarding gate, for example, before you're about to get on an airline, that camera and the software behind it will match your face that it sees in the camera to your government-issued ID. Okay, so a boarding gate seems like a little bit of a new place that I might be encountering this. What are some of the newer places that people might experience facial recognition tech? The U.S. government has been using facial recognition technology for a long time in places like airports and at border crossings, but increasingly you'll see facial recognition tech in places like concert venues, stadiums, and in airports especially. I recently encountered the tech at a trade show conference in Barcelona where there were tens of thousands of attendees, and the technology was sort of used as an express lane to get people really quickly through the venue to the trade show floor. Okay, so you can just use your face as your ticket. That seems a little bit handier. It's certainly difficult to lose that. But how safe is this data? I mean, with anything, I think we worry about what happens to this information. It really depends on where you are. In the European Union, where I attended this conference, the law dictates that anyone who uses facial recognition has to delete that data within 28 days of the final use of the service. And that data must be stored in Europe. In the U.S., the laws are a little bit different. There are a smattering of state-based laws in places like California and Illinois, but there is no federal law governing facial recognition. And so consumers really have to look into the privacy policies of these companies if they're concerned with their biometric data being shared elsewhere. Okay, so what can people do to protect their biometric data? Well, you can certainly look at that company's privacy policy to see how long they're retaining the data, where they're storing it. But ultimately, you cannot predict whether or not that company, if they do choose to keep your biometric data, chooses to pivot in the future. You know, maybe today they're an access point entry company that's trying to process people who are going through a stadium. Maybe tomorrow they're signing up with law enforcement to provide a facial recognition product to police or other agencies. I imagine that some listeners have heard about the issue of facial recognition bias. Can you tell us what the concerns around that are? Research has showed that facial recognition technology is not as accurate for people of color or for women in general. And so if it's not accurate, you know, that may not be as consequential um, if you're trying to get through an express lane to a stadium, but the consequences are much more grave if it's in the hands of law enforcement and they're trying to arrest somebody based on facial matching software. You mentioned some of the differences between the U.S. and Europe in terms of where data can be stored by these facial recognition companies. I mean, is there a, a big difference overall in how lawmakers are approaching this kind of technology? In the U.S., it's very state-based. States like California and Illinois have biometric data privacy laws, but outside of those states, you're not protected by those laws because there is no federal law governing how biometric data needs to be deleted, stored, shared at the U.S. level. Several lawmakers have tried, but those laws have not made it through Congress in any significant way. But I think that we may see more interest in the future as more of these facial recognition access points pop up in public places, like I said, concert venues and stadiums and places like that. 
And what about in Europe? Are they being more active there in terms of initiating laws for facial recognition? Well, now that data privacy laws in Europe dictate when companies need to delete this data and where they can store it and what they can do with it. And beyond that, there are proposals for banning facial recognition for uses like for identifying people in protests, for example, in private spaces. I think it's generally acknowledged that if you consent to facial recognition being used on you, then that's sort of an appropriate use of it. But a non-appropriate use is the government knowing your identity when you're in a public square or at a protest. It seems like there is going to be more and more use of facial recognition. If you want to opt out of, say, all of it, is there a way to do that? Most of the companies today allow you to opt out of facial recognition unless you're at a place like an airport where it's hard to evade if you're going through an international border. But if it's a private company, like for example at City Field, where if you're attending a Mets game, most of the entry points have a facial recognition lane and a regular schmegular ticket lane, I think that over time, the non-facial recognition option could become very cumbersome. Like, for example, you know, paying a cash at a toll booth rather than using Easy Pass for those who travel interstate on the East Coast. And so if non-facial recognition options become cumbersome, then to opt out may be a huge pain in the future. Got it. So our, our faces are now our tickets to everything, or maybe our faces will be our tickets to everything in the future. Yep, that's right. (laughs) All right, that's our personal tech columnist, Nicole Nguyen. Thanks for joining us, Nicole. Thanks for having me. All right, that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 